with the little gay show. Am I just creating the theme song now? Welcome to the little gay show, everyone. I know this looks completely different than what you're used to, and this wasn't a live stream, but this is something that we are wanting to give a try and have it where both me and Lynx take turns basically taking over the podcast and just kind of posting and talking about whatever we want. And I know a lot of people on TikTok and Instagram have been wanting a makeup tutorial, but I also want to answer a few questions and hopefully help you all when it comes to your makeup and skincare concerns and questions that you have. So no further ado, let's get into it. So first thing that I pretty much want to talk about is pretty much the look that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be doing a look inspired by the Weasley Wizard Wheezes shop. Now, if you don't know what that is, but you know who the Weasley twins are. They are from Harry Potter. They're the Weasley twins. They're these people right here. I love them so much. And Huda Beauty came out with an eyeshadow palette with a color scheme of the Weasley Wizard Wheezes, and I'm obsessed. I was able to get my hands on one at Sephora. Obviously, I work at one, so, you know, I have to get myself one. The Color Block Eyeshadow Palette. I have not used it yet. This is gonna be the first time I'm gonna be using it. And again, I'm so excited. Now the next thing I'm also going to be trying out is the Tower 28 tint, uh, Sunny Days Broad, pretty much a tinted sunscreen with SPF of 30 in it. Now, I will be honest, when I open the packaging, if you didn't notice, this this is the product that kind of oozed out of the lid. I'm not going to return it because of a situation that went down that was really embarrassing for me and I, I don't, I don't want to return this. I'm still going to use it. <laughs> but yeah, let's first open up this beautiful palette. I love Huda Beauty. If you don't know, a lot of my makeup looks that I've done involved Huda Beauty eyeshadows. I have like half of her eyeshadow collection. <laughs> so I got this one at least because I don't really have a lot of these colors, but it is so beautiful and so pretty. Like just look at it. Hi. <laughs> Hi. But oh my God, it is, it is just so pretty and beautiful. The colors that are in it with the purples and the oranges, I'm so excited. Now, of course, we all know swatch tests are very important because I want to know how pigmented this is. And I know you all want to know how pig pigmented this is. And I'm going to start with swatching this one here and then I'm going to go in with this one. And now, the moment of truth. Ooh. Honestly. That's a really nice orange. Like just, I mean, this is definitely more like a pumpkin yellow. And then this one's like a really nice orange. It, this is actually formulated really nicely. I like it. I'm even more excited now. <laughs> okay, now it's time to actually get into the prepping of the skin when it comes to all this. Obviously you wanna make sure you have clean hands. I know I just swatched my fingers, but my hands are clean. Typically do for me when it comes to my skin prep. And for those of you that don't know and who are new, my skin is very, very, very sensitive. And I pretty much have to be very careful with the ingredients that are in the products and make sure that there's no irritating ingredients in it. Like even if it's labeled as average, uh, which typically what I do when I don't know an ingredient, I go to Polish Choice Ingredient Dictionary and it's always been a really huge help and where I've learned a lot about what is irritating to the skin and what's not and what the industry considers to be very helpful when in reality it really doesn't do anything or really isn't really doesn't do what the industry says. But how I prep my skin is I first start off 
with the polyglutamic acid serum from the Inculist. The polyglutamic acid is also a primer as well as a really good hydration, a really for a really good form of hydration. It absorbs five, four times more moisture than regular hyaluronic acid, helps lock it in a little bit more, and it's a good skin prep as well. I pretty much just go and put this all over my face. I kind of just spread it along, and then I rub it into my skin, getting pretty much everywhere, including the eye area. I typically try to put a good fair amount on my skin. Now, after that, what I do is I go in with the Omega Water Cream Moisturizer from the Inculist, obviously. This contains niacinamide, which helps with oil control and also has Omega water in it, or just Omega in general, which pretty much helps with repairing your skin and it just also really helps with hydration and moisturizes your skin and kind of gives it a bit of a really nice glow. Everyone's skin is different. That's the one thing I definitely want to let you know is everyone's skin is different. What works for me is probably not going to work for you, but you know what? It doesn't hurt to try and experiment. That is the important thing when it comes to skincare and makeup. But afterwards, I go in with the Smashbox's original photo finish blurring and smoothing primer. Now this, I typically try to go where I have a lot of pores or just anything like that. So I definitely focus more on the nose area, which is basically my T-zone. Cause especially like in this area and my nose area, I tend to get a lot of really large pores and then I also try to go more down here my chin area pretty much I do put it along the entire face but I mainly focus on my t-zone area and then spread it out and I also try to put a little bit under the eyes just to help a little bit when it comes to creasing now after that what I do is I typically go for the tinted moisturizer just due to the fact that for my personal skin just regular SPF doesn't really work and I've tried multiple different SPFs from the even the Inculus to Bioessence I've used uh, Super Goop and quite a few others as well and none of them really seem to work but tinted moisturizers with SPF in it has worked which I kind of find strange it doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. <laughs> I got some of the Tower 28 Tinted Moisturizer, and we're just actually going to see. I mean, I did test it out a little bit on my neck just to see what shade I would be, but I haven't actually like properly tested it out. Now, of course, I don't really know how it's going to react with my skin. That is something that I will probably actually talk about on my TikTok once I actually have used it for a little while and see how it reacts to my skin. Now I do these dabbing motions with a damp sponge just because it helps with not absorbing all the product and also hydrating the skin as well in the process. And honestly, this is really, really nice. I mean, it is, it actually like matches beautifully on me, which is really nice. And like, I don't even feel it at all as well. But yeah, honestly, this is, this is a really nice tinted moisturizer and it gives a really nice glow. Now, typically I don't really like glowy foundations, but of course, because I want to have the hydration to my skin as well as have that sun protection. I typically go for one a tinted moisturizer with SPF, which of course is going to have a glow, but we are going to dot that down a little now, bit. The next thing I'm going to be using is going to be the NARS Radiant Concealer. I actually really like this concealer. It has pretty good coverage, especially for my dark circles that I have. Um, and I typically just 
I usually put a lot on just again because I have dark circles and I don't feel like spending money on a color corrector. <laughs> and I just kind of put it along like this inner part here and kind of just do something like that. Now, and any imperfections that I have that I want to cover up, so like any of these like pimples I have here, I have like one there, got a little bit right here, I guess. You know, just stuff like that. I'll put it on. Got one right there. <laughs> just seeing where I get all my acne, which is normal when it comes to acne. Um, if you're acne prone skin, yes, you're never going to get rid of it. And time to time it will come, uh, come back a little bit, but it all just depends on your skincare routine, which is the next thing that I want to talk about. And one of the other questions that I got from someone. Now, when it comes to the skincare, the best way to know if the skincare that you are using works well is by testing it out and also doing a lot of research. Honestly, when I first tried to take care of my skin, I really didn't do any research and I was just going based off of what I was being sold, uh, which of course, if you go into like Sephora and Ulta and all that stuff, you might actually get lucky and get someone that actually wants to help you and will actually sell you something really good. But also at the end of the day, it's going to depend on how it works on your skin. If it doesn't work on your skin, then I mean, it might work for them, but it won't work for you. It all just depends. Okay, now with a powder brush, I'm going to be using a loose setting powder, which the one I like using is KVD's Lock It Powdered Foundation. And I typically put it on a little bit underneath the eye area, just pretty much all over my face, if I'm being completely honest. Just again, like I said, I don't really like much of a shine just due to the fact that most a big portion of my life my skin is super oily and I've always wanted to get rid of that oily skin so kind of having a bit of a shine just doesn't cut it for me so yeah now if I haven't mentioned it already I'm going to mention it now but when it comes to skin but when it comes to having sensitive skin you always have to make sure that the products that you're using are clean and pretty much every product that I'm using here, I've done the research. And even though at Sephora it's not labeled as clean, at least in my opinion, based off of my research, it's clean. It doesn't really have any irritating ingredients. And again, it depends on if it works for you. If it causes you to break out like the NARS concealer, don't use it. It just doesn't work for you. It just There's something in there that your skin just doesn't like. Because there are ingredients that are supposed to be really good for your skin, but yet causes problems with some people. It's all pretty much how our skin is formulated. Everyone is different, just like a human brain. No two person's skin are alike. Just because of how my face is shaped, I have like a natural kind of like high cheekbones that like kind of stand out a little bit and like sunken cheeks a little bit. So like it... I don't really need much of a contour. I do go in with the bronzer though, which with that, I go in with the Josie Moran Vibris, Vibrancy Argan Oil Full Coverage Concealer. I use it in the shade Rich, which honestly works as a really good bronzer for me because it's that nice warm tone. And I typically just kind of put it along down here Kind of put a little bit right there like that and then sometimes i'll just go here here and then i typically try to get close to the center but not directly in the center and just kind of do this and form a bit of a triangle and then a, just a little line there and a little little dot right there and then what i'll do is i'll go in with either a brush or i'll go in with my contour brush which kind of has a little bit of this angle and I know this looks filthy it's just stained but if I do use the sponge I typically use the sponge up here again with it being damp it will help blend it out a lot easier 
while also at the same time it'll pick up any of the access product what is a good cleanser to use when you have sensitive skin and acne prone skin now that is a very good question and i can very easily answer that once i find an example of the product one thing i definitely recommend trying out obviously again is the inky list is the salicylic acid cleanser this cleanser literally saved my life it saved so many of my other clients and also associates i work with when it came to their acne prone skin and even some dark spots too which was really cool salicylic acid is a really good ingredient to use when it comes to just acne prone skin and any type of imperfection such again such as acne dark spots hyperpigmentation stuff like that it definitely works and uh, for me and a lot of other people we've seen results within about a week which is incredible honestly i'm going to be going in with the sephora collection contour brush which kind of has a little bit of this round shape and i'm going to pick up some of the kvd locket powder foundation i'm using the shade 105 because it does end up being a little lighter and i typically kind of compact this into here kind of going a little bit onto the nose just to kind of help brighten underneath that and i kind of brush some of it down into this bronzer just to kind of help blend it out but yeah as you can see the face is all nice and sculpted nicely it's bronzed but i'm now going to be adding blush i'm going to be using nars's blush in the shade orgasm excuse me i like i really like this blush it works really well on my skin i use a blush brush and i pick up some of the product and i pretty much just put it on like this and i just kind of follow along with the bronzer that i put on just to kind of add a little bit of color and i also kind of put some on my nose a little bit too just because why not <laughs> and then pretty much after that i go in with my brows now for me because as you can tell i have half of my brows are gone i've shaved half my brows off just because it makes it a lot easier just because i don't like my br natural brow shape and i don't feel like spending a lot of money trying to get them shaped by like a professional all that so i just shave it off just so i can have it the way i want it instead of kind of spending a lot of money trying to shape it in the way that i want and just constantly having those type of sessions it's easier to just shave them off but for my brow what I typically go in with is a pomade and more specifically I would use Anastasia Beverly Hills or ABH is how some people pronounce it um, in the shade Auburn just because I dye my hair to be more of a redder kind of color. I'm a ginger now and obviously I want to match that and it's actually kind of funny how I pretty much turned myself into a ginger and I'm going to be doing a Weasley inspired look. <laughs> Go figure that. <laughs> but this is how I do my brows. I'm probably going to do this off camera just due to the fact that everyone's facial shape and brow shape and all that stuff and how they want it is going to be different. Now this after i have my brows done as you can tell i've made a little bit of a mistake so i'm going to clean that up but at the same time i'm going to help sculpt my brows a little bit even though you can see i already have like a nice natural highlight going on but again i just want to cover this up so i'm going to be going in with the smashbox foundation that i talked about earlier because it's a lighter shade and it will definitely cover that up a little better <laughs> i squeeze a little bit of out onto this little palette here and I typically kind of just go in with one of these small little brushes here. This is a shader eyeshadow brush from the Sephora collection. I actually need to clean it off first because there's eyeshadow on it because I also use this for eyeshadow. I go in with a refresher spray, which is kind of a daily cleanser. And this one is from the Sephora collection. I pretty much just grab a paper towel. I just spray the brush just a little bit kind of going downwards onto the paper towel and then I just swirl it around 
and it, it pretty much just completely cleans up the brush. And then you're just, with just the very tip of the brush, you'll just kind of slide it. So like you'll just pretty much put it down and just slide it into the product a little bit just to pick some of it up. And then you'll just go over where you made the mistake. Or if you just want to go through the entire brow, you can. It's kind of up to you. Sometimes I'll just go through the entire brow just to really define the brow. Because this helps highlight the inner part of the brow. And I typically drag it all the way into there and kind of bring it downwards a little bit. And then sometimes I'll just drag it inwards towards the center of the eye. Okay, now my second favorite thing to do with this entire look is the highlighter. One of the favorite things that really brings this whole thing alive is the highlighter. Typically what I do, and this step actually kind of kills two birds with one stone, is I will use a setting powder first. Now, I typically use Milk Makeup's Gripping Hy oh, Hydro Grip Setting Spray. It's actually a really good setting spray that really holds on to my makeup. It's also good for this. It will help intensify any type of powdered or compact highlighter that you want to use. So typically what I do is I just spray a little bit on where I'm going to be putting the highlighter. And then I grab the highlighter of my choice, which I'm going to be using two. First one is going to be Makeup Forever Starlit Powder in the shade 13, which honestly, this alone is very, very blinding, and I honestly love it so much. But I'm running very low on this. It's honestly super pretty. And honestly, with this, you don't really need the setting spray, but it definitely helps. And you definitely want to make sure you tap some of the access off because this is a little bit literally goes a long way like look at how blinding that is now that i have like that natural highlight i'm going to pretty much use the same brand but this time to be using the shade 103 which has more of that purpley tint to it which honestly is something we want to go for because again we're going for more of that like orange and purple themed look and i'm not kidding when i say that this is really gorgeous it adds like you can see it kind of turned it to be a little more purple a little bit on the tip of the nose and on the bridge and then sometimes i'll also kind of just go up in the brow area as well and kind of put some on just because i want to be that dramatic bitch so now the look that i'm going to be doing for the eyeshadow today is going to be inspired by this look that I've done recently, actually. A couple of people have actually asked for a tutorial on that eyeshadow look that I've done. But instead of doing it with the whole black look, I'm going to be doing an orange and purple look with this eyeshadow. And I cannot believe I got... No. I mean, it's going to get dirty anyways, but... With the color block eyeshadow palette, I'm sorry, Huda. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this look is I'm probably going to start off with this darker purple shade right over here with pretty much the same brush that I used to conceal up here, which actually, hold on a second. I need to blend that out a little bit more. There we go. That's better. Okay. So I'm pretty much going to use this same brush and... I'm just going to pick up some of the product and I'm just going to compact it on. Now, I am not using any eyeshadow base at all, which probably not a good idea. But without the base, this is actually really nicely pigmented. But yeah, you don't have to worry too much about it looking nice and pretty you're just compacting it onto the eyes and just putting it on there. I mean, honestly, you can use a bigger brush if you want to. I'm just making my life more difficult. 
But yeah, I'm just mainly focusing on putting it on the lid area and then a little bit kind of outwards. Mainly kind of sticking within the brow bone area, oh, not the brow, uh, the eye socket area. Okay, now that you have that on, what you're going to do is just grab a small little blending brush and just gonna blend it, blend the edges out a little bit just to kind of make it a little bit more even and not so harsh looking. Okay, now that you have that done and it's all blended, I'm going to say we're going to go in with this orange that we pretty much swatched on our hand already and looks very pretty. And we're just going to go along the edge up here like this. Again, we're mainly just kind of putting it on there, not worrying too much about it looking too pretty. And you don't have to go all the way to your inner corner. You can kind of just mainly stick to like the center to the outer corner area a little bit. I'm just mainly sticking to this upper part here like this. And then we're going to go in with this yellowy color and just kind of laying it on top a little bit just to blend it out a little bit, but also kind of dull it down a little bit. To make it a little bit brighter because in person the orange is actually a little darker than what you see on camera so we're just really trying to brighten it up a little bit because because of the because of the fact that it mixed in with the purple there we go so now that we have that gonna grab that same blending brush and again blend out the edges and also blend the purple and orange together a little bit now we're going to be removing some of the makeup so what we're gonna use or at least with what I'm using is just Sephora collections eye makeup remover you can use micellar water anything like that, and a Q-tip. You're gonna grab a Q-tip, you're gonna pick up some of the product. Make sure you kind of wring it out a little bit if you can, because you don't want too much of the makeup remover getting on you. And we're pretty much just going to start about right here, about right in this area, and it kind of wipe outwards like this just to remove some of the product and then use the other side to kind of just pick up any of the extra access, including any of the makeup that kind of just bled outwards like this. Start about right here and wipe away. Just wiping away the sins that we've committed now that you've gone and removed the makeup like that, we're going to be going in with either concealer or foundation, depending on what you prefer. Grab our lighter shade foundation or concealer if you have it uh, or want to pick it up. Put a little bit onto the brush and just kind of place it on here because doing this will help lighten it up a little bit more to really make sure it stands out a lot more. And then you have like this weird little rounded part out. And if you want, you can just grab your sponge and just like really make sure it's all nice and blended around in this area by pretty much just doing this. This, this pretty much is our favorite brush for this entire look. Like this is our favorite brush because we, we're pretty much using this for this entire eye look. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but we're gonna use this brush again. <laughs> Do you want to just use this for the entire face? Use this to blend out your foundation and your concealer and your blush and your bronzer and all that. Just why not? We are going to be using a glitter glue. 
Um, and or a glitter glue primer, I should say. Glitter primer. Whatever you want to call it. And the one that I use is from Hard Candy. It is their Glitter Stay uh, Pop-In Pigments. Honestly, this is a really good one to use if you really want to make glitters stay on your face. And pretty much what we're going to do, I'm going to suggest doing one eye at a time. Because you're going to grab a little bit of this onto this brush here. And you're just going to pack it on top of the purple eyeshadow on this corner here. Do not go all the way over here. You're going to just kind of go about right here, still leaving some space in between here and where you're going to be putting the glitter. Actually, we're going to be using a couple of different products, different types of glitters, different sizes and shapes. What we're going to use, or at least what I'm going to use, and you can use the same thing too, is Hard Candy's Glitter Palette. I love this palette so much. It is amazing. One of my favorite glitter palettes of all time. It's so good. I'm not kidding. And we're pretty much going to use this purple shade. And as you can tell, I've really used this crap. Same brush. We're going to dip it into this purple like this. And we're just going to pack it on where we put the glitter glue. And as you can tell, we're getting glitter on our eye. And hopefully the glitter glue will help keep it in place longer. It should. It's actually very pretty just the way it is, but we want some chunky glitter going in it. And so we are going to be using the Edis Atelier. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's this brand here and it's going to be in the shade Luna. But honestly, these actually have like those small little fine glitters. And this is like a mixture of a whole bunch of different glitters. It, it's, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> but we're pretty much just going to go back in with the glitter a little bit and just kind of put it on top. Don't worry, it's not going to affect the glitter too much. I mean, it may turn it a little bit more, th might make it a little bit thicker and not as like this anymore, but honestly, it still looks really nice as it is. But we're just doing this because this glitter does not have a gel that comes with it at all. And so because of that, we got to make sure we find a way to make sure it stays on. We're just going to pick up some of this glitter and heck it on there a little bit. See? And you can see you got the different size glitters kind of going on in it. But as you can tell, it, it's a bit of a loose glitter. Voila! Had the chunkier glitter on. Honestly, very pretty. Very gorgeous. Definitely gives Weasley vibes a little bit. <laughs> but what we're going to do now is we're going to do the eyeliner. Now, I don't have a liquid purple eyeliner, but I do have KVD pomade, which can actually be used as an eyeliner and an eyeshadow at the same time, which is really nice. But what we're pretty much going to use is the KVD pomade in the shade Roxy Purple and pretty much any little fine point brush like this. And you're pretty much just going to pick up some of the product for the most part. This is a pretty creamy consistency and works pretty well. And pretty much is for me, basically make a wing out of this. Just a small little wing. Yeah, see, got that nice little purple wing going on. 
because we want to make sure that it's going to blend and match nicely with the eyeshadow that we already have going on here. As we all know, we got more of that purpley kind of look going on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go in with more of an orange kind of color when it comes to the rhinestones that we're going to go here. But it's kind of like these right here. I got these at the beauty supply store, but it's pretty much one of these. And we're going to be going for more of this right here because that's as close to the orange as we're going to get. Pretty much the way I do this is with tweezers. Tweezers and nail glue. It's a little bit of a process, but we're only putting six rhinestones on and that's it. Got the tweezers, got the nail glue. I pretty much use Duo when it comes to my nail glue. Lash glue, sorry. I, was I saying nail glue this whole time? I meant lash glue. Lash glue, yes. Lash glue. <laughs> You're gonna carefully pick up one of the little rhinestones with the tweezers, or if you want, I definitely prefer. I would suggest that you use one of the little rubber tip things that people use because it's a lot easier to work with than tweezers. But you're basically just going to carefully a little bit of the glue on the rhinestone or actually better yet, do three dots of glue like that. Makes it so much easier. If you have hooded eyes, try to keep on the outside of your lid area or your hood area just to make sure that the rhinestone doesn't just disappear under your eyes or get knocked off by your, you know, own eyes. And you're basically just going to place the rhinestones one by one on that area there. I don't know why I keep looking over here at myself. I need to be looking here. Pay attention to your audience, Brandy. Come on. You're better than this. <laughs> no! I got no lash glue on my pants because I'm up a fucking class. Grab your glue. There's no need to show off. There we go. Now that you have the rhinestones on your face now, we're gonna do under the eyes. Clean the brush off first of all the glitter. Grab your color block, Huda Beauty Palette. And then we're gonna go in with the same kind of orange a little bit. Kind of going along on the Let them a little bit, just about halfway, like that. Kind of blend it into the eyeliner you have going on. And if you want, I could kind of bring it down a little bit, but don't do too much because we're going to go in with the lighter shade in a second. Now, and again, this shade right here. And you can put it right on top just to kind of help lighten it up. So we want to get more of that kind of like cartoony pumpkin kind of look going on. You know what I mean? Like that lighter orange. But honestly, this look isn't done. Still got our lips to do. Still got our lips. I have an orange lipstick. This is KVD's lipstick. It's a little travel size of it. I use this during like my Halloween kind of looks. It's a really nice orange. What shade is this? This is... Milligrow, I believe, but it's a really nice orange, but it's also more on that like neutral side a little bit, a little chest shake a little bit, even though I got nothing there. But yeah, we're going to go in with this orange because it will add more orange to the look, but also kind of still give more of that neutral kind of tone instead of using like a pink or brown and kind of just having too many colors going on with this look. 
And honestly, you could just leave it like this. But I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to grab KBD yet again and their everlasting lip liner in the shade Hawkwind. It's a really nice color. And we're just going to carefully and gently add a like line the lips a little bit. As you can see, all nice and blended up. Still have that orange look going on, but you still have, but it's still darkened up a little bit. But now, time for the lashes. If you want something that's definitely going to add more drama to your lashes, I would definitely suggest using the Damn Girl Mascara by Too Faced. You are if you have tried so many different mascaras and you end up getting a lot of flaking or bleeding or anything like that, I would definitely suggest using a mascara primer. The one that I personally like using is the Sephora collection. It's affordable, but also does a really good job. And when you use it or any mascara primer, unless it says that it does not dry quickly, which for the most part, they dry pretty quickly, you want to focus on one eye at a time. And just for this, I will use the mascara primer just to kind of show you how to use a mascara primer just in case you were wanting to use one. You want to coat the entire lash with the primer and then before you even focus on the other eye, you're going to go straight into putting on the mascara of your choice itself. Do not wait for the primer to dry because otherwise it ain't going to do anything. It'll actually make the flaking a lot worse. Now, for me, when it comes to putting false lashes on, I'm not a huge fan of those single strips that kind of just go along the entire eye because it's a bit uncomfortable. It makes my eyes feel very heavy and I'm not a huge fan. So I typically go for more of the smaller kind of singular uh, lashes, like the single individual lashes. And the brand that I really like using, I and I, I believe is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure, but it's the Fox Minx individual lash extensions. Literally get these at the dollar store. I'm not kidding. Go into the Dollar Tree and these will be in the makeup section for $1.25. So after that, Set the look and do an outfit change. And there we go. Here's the final look. I decided to add this little froggy and a mushroom earring just to kind of add a little bit of like comedic kind of cute kind of vibes going on. I put on my homemade Fred Weasley sweater, the Christmas sweater that he got. I literally made this out of an old sweater that my step father gave me and I out of felt I just cut out the letter F and hot glued it on. Definitely giving Fred Weasley vibes. Fredette. Oh. What would the female version of like female name of Freddie be? Or like Fred. Like if if Fred Weasley was a female. I'll look it up and put it on the screen later. But yeah, this is the whole look. Thank you all so much for watching. This is a very long episode. But it took a very long time to do this look. But I'm hoping I was able to serve and be able to help you guys with some of the questions that you had and also kind of help educate you while I brought you through the process of doing this look while also having some ADHD moments kind of going on. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.